we have six months for UK citizens to get this petition to ban electric shock collars filled to 100. 000 signatures. Since the failure of the ban the 1st of February, 2024 I have been in communication with the government who encouraged me to build this petition. In my original proposal I included facts and figures which I've included below. Because we are always challenged. If you wish to copy and paste or share the information that's absolutely fine. Please share everywhere and let's get shock taken off the table. I am a behaviorist in Lincolnshire UK and I am writing to you concerning the use of electric shock collars and the ban that didn't happen on the 1st of February, 2024. In August 2018, Michael Gove announced electric shock collars would be banned. Now in 2024 they are still not banned, nor is legislation in place for their ban, ban of sale or use. Only the House of Lords have voted against them and not the House of Commons. If we explore European animal welfare laws, specifically the Animal Welfare Act 2006 of the UK and the Five Freedoms which states A suitable diet A suitable environment To be able to exhibit normal behaviours To be housed with or without other animals depending on species and the individual To be protected from pain, suffering, disease and illnesses the use of electric shock collars in fact breaks the law. Here is the sound of a dog in distress due to an electric shock collar from the charity Dogs Trust UK. This sound is undeniably excruciating pain, fear and distress that this poor dog is experiencing. Shock collars are banned in Germany Austria Denmark Wales Norway Sweden Portugal, Slovenia, Switzerland, Quebec, Canada. Electric shock collars are collars in which deliver an electrical current through two pins to the skin of a dog when the handler presses the button on the remote control, which can be set at different levels. The collar can either deliver a low tingling sensation to a much higher painful shock depending on the settings. Humane Society, 2020. The electric shock collar is not yet banned within the UK, however in 2018 the British government did announce that they were moving towards a ban. The electric shock collar is banned in Wales under the Animal Welfare Regulations 2010. Although electric shock collars are not yet banned in Scotland within the Animal Health and Welfare Act, 2006 the Scottish government set out guidelines that the use of aversive training Devices, which includes electric shock collars can constitute an offence for unnecessary suffering within this Act. Northern Ireland does not currently yet have any legislation regarding the electric shock collar. Association, born in 2020. Within the UK there are many organisations who have publicly declared their concerns for the electric shock collar to cause pain and suffering to dogs and that they want the electric shock collar to be banned. These organisations include, but is not an exhaustive list, the Pet Professional Guild British Isles, the Kennel Club, Dogs Trust, the British Veterinary Association, and the RSPCA as well as individual organisations and individuals in which a petition was signed and delivered to the UK government. Government.UK 2018 An electronic collar is a collar which is placed around the neck of a dog. They deliver a shock which has been argued by some to be a tap or a tingle when activated. Serple and Barrett 2016, pp. 221-223, Serple found trainers would argue that the collars were used for tools for punishment also known as P plus as a consequence of not giving the desired behavior, or used in negative reinforcement, are that the unpleasant stimuli would cease when the desirable behavior began. Serple found that there was always three types of collars available, ones used with a remote in which the handler can give a shock at a distance. One that did not require human intervention such as an electronic bark collar and the electronic collar, which is paired with an invisible fence. Serple and Barrett 2016, pp. 221-223. Serple also found that people preferred the use of the electric shock collar due to the distance of handling the collar and the remote, and that they believed that the dog would not associate the Shock with the handler whereas they might with a choke or prong collar correction. 
Serple and Barrett 2016, pp. 221 to 223, which demonstrates that handlers are aware that shock collars cause pain and that dogs can associate the source of the pain coming from the handler. Aversive conditioning or punishment is when there is an unpleasant punishment for an unwanted behavior. Punishment is broken down into two formats, positive and negative punishment. Overall, 2013. Positive punishment is the idea that when the behavior should decrease because there has been an unpleasant punishment after the unwanted behavior, and negative punishment is based on the probability of the behavior decreasing because something pleasant was removed after the behavior occurred. Overall, 2013. The idea of punishment is to eliminate a behavior however, when the punishment is only effective when given in the presence of the punishment this begins to stop being punishment and begins to become abuse. Overall, 2013. DEFRA of the UK government commissioned AA questionnaire to understand owners' ideas of shock collars to further understand the harm that they cause. The results showed. DEFRA found the following answers from the participants. 6% answered there should be regulation for the devices. 20% answered that electronic collars and fences are fine if long as they are used correctly. 11% answered that electronic collars are effective tools. 10.5% answered that more dogs would be euthanized if electronic collars were not used when all other training methods had failed. 27% felt that fence containment systems were important. 7% felt that fences improve the quality of life for the animals so that they are not restricted to being kept indoors. 15% felt that remote collars were important for both safety and control. 6.5% felt that electric collars improved the quality of life through freedom and a reduction in behavioral problems. 9% felt that electronic collars did not shock the dog or that the shock is at a low level. 17% responded that there was other training options available. 23.5% responded that the devices were cruel and harmful. Data sourced from DEFRA. Assets.publishing.service.gov.uk 2018. The Kennel Club also commissioned their own research project in which they found that. Kennel Club 2014. One in four dogs showed signs of stress when compared to 5% of dogs within the non shock collar range. DEFRA commissioned study AW1402, 2014. One in three dogs yelped when the electric collar was first used, and one in four yelped due to uses thereafter. DEFRA commissioned study AW1402, 2014. 73% of the public disagreed with the use of the electric shock collar. Kennel Club commissioned survey, 2014. 79% of the public felt that behavioral issues could be trained using positive reinforcement, and not negative reinforcement collar. Kennel Club commissioned survey, 2014. 74% of the public said that they would support the government in bringing in a ban on electric shock collars. Kennel Club Commissioned Survey, 2014. The results suggest there is concern for welfare of dogs within England being trained with the use of an electronic shock collar. Research papers demonstrate the statistical cause for concern surrounding the welfare issues, as suggested by the general public as well as organizations such as the Kennel Club and Nikki Tudge of the Pet Professional Guild calling for the ban of the electric shock collar. Kennel Club 2014 and Tudge and Nilsson, 2016. In dogs, negative behavioral changes were found, these including pacing of the boundary, refusing to either leave the house or the garden, regressions in house breaking, sudden vehicle or passerby chasing, excessive barking when people enter or left the property, fearful of playing within particular areas of the garden and fear of getting into the car. Bowen Vicar, 2020. It was also found after 12 months of using an invisible fence and electronic collar system that dogs would begin to display aggressive behaviors. The aggression was found to be directed at passers-by and vehicles so the behavior escalated from car chasing and chasing people, walking past the perimeter to now becoming aggressive in this. Behavior, aggressive with people leaving by foot, misdirecting onto other pets around passers-by especially when leaving by foot, attacking animals entering or leaving the garden, nipping and or biting at children when playing. 
these were the behavior changes and behaviors documented. Bowen Vakar, 2020. Within invisible boundaries the dogs are found to become aroused by any outside stimulus, and when the arousal heightens they then try to push beyond the boundary which causes them to be electrically shocked by the collar which they then pair the stimulus with the shock. Miller, 2003. Within a study specifically looking at the welfare issues concerning the use of electronic shock collars, three groups of dogs were studied. One group, which was trained by experienced dog trainers who used electronic collars in their training, they were asked to train two groups of dogs. One group with electronic collars for recall and one group of dogs without electronic collars for recall and third group was trained by trainers from the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. Cooper et al., 2014. They found that there were behavioral signs of distress when the dogs were trained with the electronic collar. They tested this through cortisol measurements and urinary tests. They found the behavioral signs of distress increased when the higher settings of the electronic collar was used. They also found that whilst the guidelines from the manufacturers of the electronic collars was followed this did give rise to poor welfare for the dogs who was wearing the electronic shock collars. Despite the manufacturer instructing that if the instructions were followed this would not harm the welfare of the dog. They also found that the electronic collar did not make for superior training over training without the electronic collar, but whilst there was no physiological damage found psychological disturbances were documented. Cooper et al., 2014. In the case of electronic shock collars the understanding of the use of the collar is to decrease behavior which is not wanted. The research papers looked at also look at the welfare of the dogs, in which the electronic shock collars are used in testing their saliva and cortisol levels, to determine the amount of physiological and psychological stress the dog goes through when the electronic shock collar is used which in turn affects the welfare of the dog in not meeting their lawful needs within the five freedoms. Animal Welfare Act, 2020 the results and the paper concluded that training with an electronic shock collar causes immediate distress in pet dogs, especially when used at the higher settings. Although the collars were used within the guidelines of the manufacturers to consider welfare, it was found that the electronic collars were negative to the dog's welfare and that the collars placed the dogs at risk when trained with an electronic shock collar. The results also concluded that the electronic shock collars were not the best method to train dogs with and that the reward system had a much higher rate of success. Cooper et al., 2014. The final report, as discussed within the literature review submitted to DEFRA, the DEFRA Commission Study AW1402, 2014 was written by Professor Jonathan Cooper, Dr. Hannah Wright, and Professor Daniel Mills of the University of Lincoln. The research paper above was included in the DEFRA final report. The dogs were noted to react either by an ear twitch or some form of movement when the collar was switched on initially. The dogs were tested during play and within the test of the lowest pulse it was thought the dogs disengaged from play due to disinterest, as opposed to the pain of the collar at this time. It was also found that especially within the beginning of the use of the electric shock collar that the dogs vocalized the pain from the electronic shock collar both in behavioral observations and in feedback from questionnaires. The reports also found that overall there was a change in the emotional state and the cortisol levels of the dogs in which were trained with the electronic shock collar as opposed to the dogs in the control group who were trained with positive reinforcement methods. This concluded overall that electronic shock collars are aversive and can negatively affect the emotions of the dogs when trained with the electronic shock collar. DEFRA Commission Study AW1402, 2014. In conclusion it has been found that electronic shock collars are essentially ineffective in their use when compared with that of positive reinforcement training. Cooper et al., 2014. It was also found that a substantial amount of owners who participated in the questionnaires for the research projects had either purchased the electronic shock collars secondhand from the internet or could not explain how to use an electronic shock collar properly. DEFRA Commission Study AW1402, 2014 It has been argued and concluded that dogs who were tested over the four days with the electronic shock collar showed a negative, emotional state and cried when the electric shock collar was first 
Yeast and a small number of dogs within the group over the four days cried during the use of the electronic shock collar, and owners disclosed in their questionnaire that their dogs also cried with the first use of the electronic shock collar and with subsequent uses. DEFRA Commission Study AW 1402, 2014 It has also been concluded within DEFRA Commission Study AW 1402. 2014 that the manufacturer's guidelines and instructions missed important information, and was not entirely clear on the use of the frequencies of the shocks to be delivered. How to properly use the collars and how to phase out the collars as well as guidance on the age and the health of the dog. Leaving the use of the electronic shock collar open to interpretation as was found in the questionnaire results by Cooper. It all 2014 that 6% of owners had used the collars on the highest frequency during training. The dogs within the positive reinforcement group were found to have high cortisol markers, which could be the anticipation of the enjoyment of the training as could be seen in the body language, and the lip licking at the presence of the food. Electronic shock collars prohibit a dog from being able to express normal behavior whether this is with the continuous use as recommended by Crone, L. 2017 or whether it is with a cued warning that a shock will be given if the correct behavior was not given. Cooper, et al. 2014. The conclusion within the DEFRA Commission Study AW 1402. 2014 from the owner's feedback, was that there was a higher result of improvement with the reinforcement training than there was for the use of the electronic shock collar, feedback being effective. This highlights that if positive reinforcement training is more effective than shock collar training then there is no need for altering the emotional state of the dog negatively based on the use of the electronic shock collar. If a dog cannot express their normal behavior this is a violation of the five freedoms within the Animal Welfare Act, 2006 Government.UK 2020 and the dog is not having their five freedoms lawfully met. The evidence is hard to argue when eight countries within Europe have already successfully banned the use of the electric shock collar, as have Australia and Quebec, Canada. It is time the UK set the standard as an independent country and stood alongside Wales who has banned the use of shock collars since 2010. To set a standard for animal welfare and the prevention of harm and abuse to dogs within the UK. As a wheelchair user who walks three large breed dogs on harnesses there is absolutely no need or excuse for these barbaric devices. It is time the UK came down hard on animal abuse and enforced the Animal Welfare Act to ensure the protection of animals within the UK and to allow them to be free from abuse and distress as the Act. States I have included references to back up my statements and for quick reference to look them up. Yours sincerely, Tasha Atwood bccs.dipadv can be hvpetbc iscp k9 dip prac Interdog Certified Canine Behaviorist and Trainer. References. Government.UK 2020. Animal Welfare. Available at. Assets.publishing.service.gov.uk. 2018. Electronic Training Collars for Cats and Dogs in England. Summary of Responses and Government Responses. Available at. Association. B. 2020. BVA Policy, Electric Shock Collars and Training Aids. British Veterinary Association. Available at assets.publishing.service.gov.uk. 2018. Electronic Training Collars for Cats and Dogs in England. Available at Serple, J. and Barrett, P. The Domestic Dog, Its Evolution, Behaviour and Interactions with People. Cambridge, United Kingdom, Cambridge University Press. Overall, K. 2013. Manual of Clinical Behavioural Medicine for Dogs and Cats. St. Louis, Elsevier. Cooper, J. Wright, H. and Mills, D. Casey, R. Blackwell, E. Evandriel, K. and Lines, J. 2013. Studies to assess the effect of pet training aids, specifically remote static pulse systems, in the welfare of domestic dogs.
Final report in DEFRA Project AW1402. RAND.DEFRA.GOV.UK, available at thekennelclub.org.uk 2020. Electric shock collars. Available at Tudge, N. and Nilsson, S. 2016. The Pet Professional Guild, the use of shock in animal training. Petprofessionalguild.com. Available at Bowen Vicar, L. 2020. Do electric shock collars harm dogs? Whole Dog Journal. Whole Dog Journal. Available at Miller, P. 2003. Electric dog fences, are they safe? Whole Dog Journal. Whole Dog Journal. Available at Cooper, J. Wright, H. and Mills, D. Casey, R. Blackwell, E. Evandriel, K. and Lines, J. 2013. Studies to assess the effect of pet training aids, specifically remote static pulse systems, in the welfare of domestic dogs. Final report in DEFRA Project AW1402. RAND.DEFRA.GOV.UK, available at assets.publishing.service.gov.uk 2018, Electronic Training Collars for Cats and Dogs in England Available at